Hello everyone, welcome you all. This is Suresh from Azure Automation Channel. Today in this video, I am going to demonstrate defect life cycle. And this question is asked in many interviews to know whether candidate is really worked in testing or not. If he is working in testing and mainly focusing on both manual and automation, they have to know each and every stage of bug, bug life cycle or defect life cycle. Let's get started and see all the stages of bug life cycle or defect life cycle. So whenever we identify any defect as part of automation or as part of manual testing, so we create that as a new defect. So the defect has severity and priority. That's an uh, other thing. So severity is how much it affected the functionality and priority is how much important that defects need to be fixed. So this is a stage where we will create a new defects. After that, in the next stage, we have assign. So as soon as we create a defect, it has to assign to any one of the developers. So that will be assigned to a developer and they will be seeing that defect, what is the actual defect. Then we have an active status. So they will push that to the root cause analysis to identify from where it is causing or from which release it is caused or by which code feature got introduced this defect. So they will identify the defect root cause and they will see in which browsers it is causing. So they, we have to see it, if it is a browser specific issue, it has to handle in a different way. If it is a feature that is missing or feature which is caused to introduce that defect, they will identify there. Then they will provide fix on that and they will move to the testing where testing team will start testing it and they will see if that is working fine then they will start it verifying each and every module which is associated to it like a uh, sanity testing so if a defect is fixed in certain area we will perform sanity testing and verify whether it's correctly working and providing a fix is not impacting any other module so in that way we will test so once it's done, we will move that defect to close status. So this is the normal flow. Whenever there is another flow where de uh, developer provides a defect fix, but after it reaches to the testing, tester identifies that defect is not fixed. Then what he will do? So in the testing phase itself, he will reopen that defect and he will put in an active status so that developer again see that defect and again try to uh, bring up the new fix for it then again that will go to test then again go to verified then again go to closed so this cycle will be repeating so what happens when a uh, defect which is we have created but it is assigned to a developer and then developer says that defect is not a valid defect or defect which is created by the tester uh, it's it has no scope of fixing that defect. So what he will do he will reject that defect So there is a stage called rejection So reject will be happen to the defect and most important thing during our entire testing phase or per release So defect rejection should be very much less than or less than 5% It has to be if it goes to the more than 5% then that represents the productivity of our testers so whoever is testing the application, they are not clear enough to understand each and every requirement. So make sure that you don't go beyond 5% of rejection of your defects. So there is one more case where developer wanted to fix that defect, but now they don't want to do it. They have to do in future. So in that case, there is a possibility of deferred status. So deferred status refers to uh, the due to the time constraints or the priority things they wanted to move that defect to the next stage or the future releases so in that way they will move that defect to the default status so this is the entire bug life cycle and defect life cycle we have to explain this in a proper way in an interview so that interviewer can understand that you are the expert in testing so i hope this entire bug life cycle or defect life cycle is helpful to you in as part of interview section and if you have any questions queries do comment in my comment section i will help you out and do subscribe to my channel thank you